Hey, good morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls and I'm your host and I have a real life rock star on the show today. This woman is um, joining us from uh, somewhere in Arizona, I think. We'll find out here in a minute. But um, her name is Julie and I'm going to butcher her last name. Why am I not? Well, I should have asked you, Julie. Heimovich, right? Heimovich, I believe. That's perfect. 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 So welcome to the show, Julie. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And what part of the country are you in? Let's tell everybody. I am in Scottsdale, Arizona. Scottsdale. I knew it was Arizona. I just wasn't sure. Now, Scotts, I've never been there, that part of Arizona, but <laughs> it's like, part. is it part of Phoenix or are they separate? They're, they're separate. Okay. Um, most people from Scottsdale get offended when you when you clump Scottsdale and Phoenix together. I don't, but you know, we I, I affectionately refer to as Snotsdale. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, I'll usually tell people I'm from Phoenix, but it's they're two very kind of different yet similar. But yeah. it's a suburb. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so again, I know that and. and I mean, you do a lot of things, um, and and you and I were just kind of talking about some of the things that you do. Um, but you run, you're, I believe you're the COO. Is that right? Of is well, that... I have a couple of different titles. I I started out as the COO, but I'm the vice president of the company now. But I basically still do. I'm I do the COO job. I do the vice president's job. I do the HR job. Um, you know, I just, I'm not the janitor yet, but I'm sure that's coming at some point. But um, I do, I do assist in running a large um, oral surgery and endodontic practice here in um, the greater Phoenix area in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have a lot going on and, and I've had the pleasure of meeting your husband and spent, spent a great deal of time uh, talking with him and he is absolutely amazing. The guy's, um, He's, you and I have kind of talked about, like, he's so smart, like, he's one, he's like, like, genius. It was like, seriously, like, talking to Einstein or something. I was like, I couldn't keep up. <laughs> yeah, most, of, most of us can't. He's all over the place, but yet keeps everything tied together really nicely. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. I just, I've learned to just not even ask, just kind of go with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, you know, as I told you, I, you know, I created this show to help people um, have a breakthrough. You know, I've hit um, I've hit some some pretty big barriers in life. And and I can remember, you know, many, many times thinking, holy crap, I'm done. This is the end. <laughs> like, I'm not getting through this. And, and, you know, I know you've been through that. I, matter of fact, recently I saw your post about the floods taking out the, the, like your entire house or something. It was insane. I was like, what? Like, that was crazy. It was crazy. Um, luckily it didn't take out the entire house, but we were in the middle of, um, well, just to address this issue, but yes, I have been through a lot of crap yeah. in life. But that most recent thing that you're talking about was we had um, Hurricane Rosa came through the um, southern Arizona, um, you know, state, and we have been in the middle of home renovations. And my back patio was basically, um, we took out all the windows and we put in these sliding doors and it was... Um, I can't put an intelligent sentence together. Anyway, it was all boarded <laughs> up because the doors weren't in yet. 
And all of a sudden, I'm looking out the backyard, and it looks like the apocalypse is coming. <laughs> There's rain. The pool is literally, like, I'm doing a pool watch. The kids are looking at me like, what are you doing, Mom? And I'm watching as the pool level keeps rising and rising, and I'm watching this flood on my back patio because the, wa- the water is pooling there as well. The pool hadn't overflowed yet, but it, I'm just watching and watching as it's getting closer and closer to the end of the boards. Oh. And I look and there's about a space this big in between the boards and the foundation. I'm like, that water's coming in. And I see all the electrical wires that oh they had my just gosh. Up on the floor. And I'm thinking the house is gonna burn down. And I was home alone with the kids. The pool did indeed overflow. I was smart enough though, we hadn't gotten sandbags because we didn't expect this to come. And I was able to, um, kind of Mickey Mouse some things underneath. So we didn't end up having it in the house, but the yard was flooded for about two weeks. The good news is we figured out we had a drainage issue in the backyard, so that's been fixed. So bring on the hurricanes, bring on the monsoons, we're (laughs) we're great. Um, You know, it could have been a lot lot worse, first world problems. We're all safe, the house didn't burn down, nothing got ruined, so. So, but see, that's the thing is, is when you've been through enough crap, eventually you learn to look for the silver lining. And, right. and, and that's exactly what you, you, you did. So, um, you know, let's start, let's start with kind of, you know, telling everybody um, where you were born and raised. Okay. So I was born in a, a little town called, a little city called Boston, Massachusetts. Ah, little, Just tiny, a little city. tiny. Uh, and I grew up for the first uh, 14 years of my life in suburbs. Um, the biggest one was Canton. It's a little, not Canton, Ohio, but Canton, Massachusetts. It's a little suburb um, on the south shore of Massachusetts. And it was, I won't call it an idyllic childhood, but it was nice. And um, it, I lived a pretty privileged life um, up until that point. I wouldn't call us wealthy, but we were incredibly comfortable. Um, my parents seemed to be happily married. I have a younger brother. We grew up in a neighborhood that to this day, I still keep in touch with many, many, many of the neighbors. Um, wow. In fact, I go back frequently and almost all the original owners are still there. Wow. Um, I was back, um, unfortunately, a couple of years ago, my closest friend, uh, or one of my closest friends passed away from ovarian cancer, who was a neighbor. Um, and walking into her parents' house was like going back into a time warp. Everything was still the same. And it just, it feels like a security blanket wrapped around me every time I go back and I drive the neighborhood and I, I do all that because it was a very close knit community. We yeah. would, you know, never had to tell our parents where we were going. It's like, Hey, after school, bye, I'm going out. Everybody congregated, you know, at one of the neighbor's homes. And it was that kind of a community. And then, um, when I was 13, my dad, got very sick. Um, He wasn't feeling well. He had gone to the doctor and it turned out that he had chronic hepatitis B um, that he got from, he had had mono apparently that turned into hepatitis, but nobody knew that. And he got it from unsterile dental, uh, of all things, dental supplies. Oh my Um, gosh. Yep, his dentist had been um, doing some work at a uh, mental health facility and there was a mono outbreak at that facility and my dad unfortunately um, became one of the victims and he was, um, he became disabled and we had to move to a warmer climate. So we um, went from Massachusetts to a six month stint in Arizona and my, and it was not like, we try not to talk about the six months that we lived here um, which ironically now I'm back and I love it. And then from there we moved to what I like to refer to as the armpit of America. We moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, and I um, went to high school and undergrad there. And I don't have good memories of Las Vegas. I like to kind of just pretend that didn't happen too. Yeah, it did, though, and it did shape my life, and I can't totally ignore it. Um, but going back to my childhood really quickly, not only. So while things were somewhat privileged, I also, um, because we talked about being real and, um, you know, why I do the work outside of the dental practice that I do is to give back to others. Um, 
I was abused mm. from pro approximately, I, I keep trying to figure out when it started. I'd say like around seven or eight years old until we moved away. Um, I was molested by, um, by a relative oh. and, um, that definitely impacted, um, lots of things yeah. in my life moving forward. So, oh. um, that's kind of a brief little background. Wow. Well, you know, yeah. I lived in, um, Las Vegas as well. And I, I went through abuse as well, not in Las Vegas. Well, yes, I did, but we don't <laughs> even go there. Um, but, but the, you know, um, I hate that city. Like mm -hmm. I will, ne I swear I'm, I will never go back there. People are like, are you, Hey, come out to this conference. I'm like, is it in Vegas? They're like, yeah. I'm like, nope. Like it's, nope. and it's, it's gotten worse. They've legalized weed. Like I took my little girls <laughs> down to the, the strip. My, my oldest daughter flew out to visit and there's people like you could get a contact high just from walking down the strip. Now it's like, it's, it's, it's just, it is, it's yeah. the armpit of America. Sorry if you live in Las Vegas and you disagree, I, um, but I hated it. Sorry to my Las Vegas friends and, and family that may be tuning in, but I just, I, I, um, I'll tell you quickly. So one of our children has special needs and has been living out of our house since 2013. And up until last year, she was at a um, therapeutic boarding school in Utah and it was in the Southern, it was in Cedar city. Uh -huh. So to get there, you we would fly. We did. You'd either fly into Vegas and drive to Cedar, or we would drive through straight to Cedar if we went with the family. And I want you to know that as we would get closer and closer to the Nevada line, I would start getting like I, the anxiety would increase. And I was, I don't know if I can say this on live. I was such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You can say and it. everyone's like, oh my God, we must be getting close to Vegas. And I could just, I could feel it. And I literally would stop breathing for parts of that drive until I knew we were out of the Vegas outskirts. And then all of a sudden this calm would wash over me and, and the kids would be like, oh good, mom's back. Like yeah. good mom's back. And I knew that. And I, I hated doing that because that's how I feel. And yeah. my 30th high school reunion there, I just aged myself. My 30th high school reunion was um, this past September. Yes. Just <laughs> Carry the one. There, yes, there you go. Um, I'm proud of my age. But yeah. at any rate, um, I did not go. I went for my 10 year. I went for my 20 year to see some friends. And I'm like, why am I going to do that to myself? Right. Not winning. So I, I have no, no desire nor need to go back there either. So I'm right there with you, Ken. Yeah. I, I, it's just a... Uh... Yeah, my my uh, my wife is on here. She said, "Yeah, just to go like we literally wanted to just take the girls down to the M and M store on the strip." And yeah, that was it. and there's like there's like puffs of weed all around us, and it was horrible. But um, so yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I absolutely despise Las Vegas and just about everything in it. Um, but we have friends, so we we love those yeah. friends that are still. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I call it the addiction mecca as well. And it actually, that, yeah, that was one of the, that coupled with my, my childhood experience yeah. and teenage experience up until then, um, motivated me to get into the field of psychology because it was everywhere. And Vegas, you know, as you're flipping through the TV channels, never mind like leaving your house, but, Watching t the TV channels in Vegas, you can see every addiction right there. Or you walk into a lobby yeah. of one of the hotels, and you know, you I don't know if this was your experience living there, but um, we ate out a lot at the yeah. hotel because yeah. my my mom, well, there there was some there was some gambling issues. Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> Sorry, mom. my my mom my mom is, has been in recovery for a very long time, so yeah. I. I I get the whole recovery thing. I've been in recovery myself from an eating disorder. So wow. I, when we were talking earlier, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I totally get that. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, they would get the freebies, you know, all the comp meals. So it was cheaper to go to the hotel and you'd walk in and there's, you know, nicotine addiction, sex yeah. addiction with all the, you know, little yeah. cocktails is wearing nothing and all the shows and yeah. alcohol and food addiction because of all, you know, I call them the bar phase, the buffets, you know, yeah. all you 
feet. So every gambling, it's all right there packaged and you haven't even made it through the lobby yet. I know. Um, it's awful. I mean, and, and, you know, it's crazy is in, you know, uh, like the, you, you can walk through and like the smell of, of cigarette smoke and alcohol is so intense. It's crazy. We were there for 13 months and, and quite honestly, wow. um, I mean, and, and, and look, and I know you live in, 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 in Fe Scottsdale. <laughs> <laughs> Snobsdale, is that what you said? Snobsdale. Yeah, Snobsdale. <laughs> All Snobsdale. So, yeah. um, so, but you know, we, and we live, we live in a private, private, uh, community and, and, and my wife, my wife, like people don't even wave to, that's the way it was in Vegas. Like we live in a, we lived in a gated community and never met a neighbor. Never met a neighbor in a year. My wife's like, this is ridiculous. So she's like, she bakes cookies at Christmas and goes door to door. <laughs> and people, I'm surprised. I'm like, you're going to get shot. People are crazy here. Like, yeah. You know, I think that's a West. I think that really is a West Coast mentality because it's funny you say that because I always say, you know, I could not pick my neighbors out of a lineup. <laughs> so if I had to, like, I couldn't. Except I know. For one, <laughs> Except for one who I know because they're a dentist and we we have a, you know kind of a relationship. Yeah. Otherwise, I like if I was in the grocery store and my next door neighbor, I wouldn't know that that was my neighbor. I'd be like, oh, you okay? But in Massachusetts, like what I'm saying, like everybody knew each other. Right. Everybody knew whose kid it was, even if you. And we would leave doors open. Everyone would sit out and be friendly. Nobody's outside. Here. Right. Nobody, no one does anything together. It's yeah. crazy. I think yeah. it's a West. Not that's not just a Vegas thing. It's West. Yeah, yeah. And my buddy Eric Cornelius says, "I'm in. You're selling Vegas to me. LOL. I'm moving there." <laughs> I think he he would be he'd be a good candidate as a client of yours, actually. <laughs> so, oh boy. But anyway, so so um, so you you graduated high school. You went to you said you went to undergrad at at UNLV. Is that where you went? At UNLV, yes. Okay. Wow. UNLV. And then got the hell out. <laughs> yeah. We went down to UNLV for a, um, yeah, I mean, my wife just said, because she always sees the, she says, Vegas is not a bad place, just not right for us. Like, Agreed. one of the things that I love about, about the only thing I really loved about Vegas is you're like literally two to three hour drive away from all kinds of amazingness, like all it's kinds of it. It's true. Yeah. Look, I don't want to totally dog Vegas. It, I, I, I have a lot of special people there, so I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope I don't get any like nasty grams or messages later. But, um, <laughs> you know, UNLV. I will say this: at the time that I went, probably not as great as it is, but it has come a long way, and I, it's a great school. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't hesitate if, well, I wouldn't be happy to go visit, but if one of my kids said, "Oh, I'm going to go to UNLV." They have a great law school. They have a fabulous dental school. Right. So it is up and coming, and they and they've got a lot more culture there than they did when when I lived there. But but, anyway. but let's let's be let's be real. Um, the the best dental school in the country is at the Ohio State University. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, uh, Ohio State University is on my son David, who's fifteen uh -huh. months player that we were talking about earlier. That's on his short list of where he would like. Really? to um, he won hockey so oh, um, yeah. just so you know you never know could end up yeah. there <laughs> yeah. well you know i and i don't know a whole lot about hockey but um i i i know we like we have a a professional team here now and we have for for several years but um but i you know i i do enjoy it but so you went to you went to undergrad in Vegas and then you said you got the hell out. Is that where did you go from there? Where did you go to Arizona or I did not go to Arizona first. Okay. Um I went back to what I call my mothership. I went back to Massachusetts. Um I missed the culture, I missed my friends, and I, I have some family that's still there and you know, I idealized it because for me, Massachusetts was the last place that my family was intact and yeah. it's the last place that I have some happy memories, even though I had some, you know, the abuse that I talked about overall, it was a happy place for me. I had friends. I went to summer camp. It was everything that I knew. And, um, 
you know, when we moved, just a little side note, when we moved to Vegas, my family kind of fell apart. My parents ended up getting divorced and it just, I don't want to get into all the details, but it was good. And um, I wanted to go back to what, what, what felt good to me and went back to Massachusetts a little different as an adult, Yeah. you know, all of a sudden, you know, that snow that would magically disappear as a kid off the driveway. Yeah. Well, I know now how it magically disappeared, you know, the snow plow came and took it away or my dad's shovel. Yeah. I had to shovel the snow. I had to put a lot, a lot, a lot of layers of clothing on to go outside. It just was not as exciting. Um, I was thinking about grad school, but I had to do some, I had to um, do some things to make myself a little more um, admissions worthy because I was always a really good student, but an undergrad, I'm not going to lie, did not do as well as I should have done. Um, right. Maybe if I had shown up for some of the classes a little more often, I would have done better. Right. Um, but it was a hard time for me. I was very into my addiction. I mentioned yeah. I had an eating disorder. I was um, what's called bulimorexic. Mm. I restricted my calories and then so I didn't binge eat but I restricted my calories and then exercised a lot to binge out whatever I ate and um so if we're talking maybe I eat 500 calories a day now I'm exercising for two or three hours at a time I'm having nothing I'm five foot nine and wow. I was down 90 pounds that's all I need to tell you oh so, my gosh I'm not not healthy not good wow so um stayed for uh, two years in Massachusetts and then said, I need to be back closer to, um, my family. Uh, and I didn't want to go to Vegas cause that's where my parents still weren't my brother. So I, I took a chance on Arizona again and I'm glad I did and, um, got enrolled in, um, Ottawa university here and did my master's in clinical psych wow. and had some awesome opportunities presented to me throughout that, um, that time. And I'm very grateful for that. So. Wow. So you would, now, now had you, had you gotten married yet or even met, met your like, or what, what were you just like still? I met Steve in my, um, as I was graduating with my masters. Oh, um, okay. I had just finished, my master's and then I met him and while I was doing my master's I got an internship at a place called the Meadows in Wickenburg Arizona which is an inpatient um, rehab treatment center it's a very well-known center um, I, I can talk about the people that it's been publicized have been there Harvey Weinstein was there wow. uh, Kevin Spacey was there Tiger Woods was there and a whole bunch of others that it doesn't even matter but um, that internship really shaped and changed the course for my future. I worked with Claudia Black, who founded Al-Anon. I worked with Patrick Carnes, who's one of the leading experts in sex addiction. I worked with Marilyn Murray, who's a leading expert in trauma and abuse. And while I was interning there, um, it just so happened I was at the right place at the right time. They knew I was getting my master's and I was offered a full uh, role as a primary counselor and I was given their eating disorder group to work with and it was amazing and it was a great experience. The downside was 57 miles from my house to Wittenberg and I drove that round trip every day and I still don't know how I did that but wow. um, after a couple of years of that Steve said what are you doing? Why Why are you still doing that? Because I we were talking before kind of about um, yeah you know, lacking empathy at some point. And I found myself in that, in that program, listening to some horrible, horrible stories of abuse and other things. And I remember, did you ever see the movie Analyze This with Billy Crystal? I don't know when, if I have, or maybe I have, <laughs> maybe I have. So it's a movie about, he's a psychoanalyst. Yeah. And he, blah, blah. But in that movie, he's sitting and listening and in his head, he's going, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like you're not making any like I don't care you know something like that <laughs> yeah. like listening I've to these it. horrible stories of rape and abuse and I'm like oh my god stop your whining because the person before that had even a more horrific and I, that's when I'm like I think it's time to step away for a little while because yeah. it, I was desensitized and it was not a good situation so right, that's right. when I shifted gears and um, Steve said hey 
Why don't you, I need you in the business. I need you to help with um, employee relations and HR. Why don't you go get your MBA? And he went, no, I don't want to get my MBA. And he's like, nope, get your MBA. So I went and I got my MBA. Wow. Jeez. So you're like incredibly educated too. Education is, I'm, I'm a nerd and I, I, I love to learn. So that's yes. awesome. Yeah. So, so, so that's like, and at some point you guys got married, you had kids. Um, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> what's that? We had a lot of kids. Yes. How many kids do you have? Five. Five? I have five. I know. Oh my gosh. I didn't know you had five. How am I missing five. those pictures? I thought, I thought that you had like, uh, for some reason, I thought you had three kids. I don't know why. No, uh, yeah. They're never all together, but five. Um, five. Wow. They range in age from almost 21 all the way down to 11. Well, and that's because in Arizona, it's so hot. The only <laughs> thing you can do is stay inside and you get bored and then, yeah, then you know. along comes a kid. <laughs> yeah. or, or two or three. Or, or, or five. So, so like, um, so you guys, like, what are, what are some of the things along the way? Because, you know, as we talked about, and I'm very transparent, I have 16 and a half years of recovery and, and sobriety, um, and life sucked prior to that. It literally sucked. I did not realize how, um, absolutely, um, powerful, and evil denial is <laughs> like, yeah. like it's legit like i didn't know everybody else knew except for me but like you know uh, you know you've you've recovered you've you're you're on this journey of helping other people and um you've been through abuse i've been through abuse we've you know been through some craziness in life but what in your opinion what is you know, what are, because I know, and, and I know you're, you're very humble. You don't brag about it, but I mean, you guys are doing well, like very well. You have like 4,000 practice locations or something, right? <laughs> no. Not quite, but yeah. You have a I mean, bunch. We have, we have, we have 10 offices yeah. and it's, it's a lot to, to handle. Right. Well, you know, I used to be endorsed by the Ohio Dental Association or the Columbus Dental Society, which is part of the ODA. And, and, and so I've done a lot of marketing and, and web development for the dental world. And I know that endodontists and oral surgeons with one practice location are doing incredibly well, 10, like, holy moly. So um, but like, you know, what are some of the things in, in your life and in helping other people that, that, that you see hold people back? What are, what's like, when I say that, like, Hey, what do you think holds people back the most? What are the, what's the first thought or two that comes to mind? I, I honestly think, cause, and I, I've given this a lot of thought, I think it's, so some of it is self-esteem, some of it is belief, and I think letting outside um, negative influences influence you. Because if you listen to people, put you're you're so. I think when you're abused, you're so used to being beaten down. And I like to refer to. I, I'm a big. I like to use a lot of analogies. And one of my favorite movies, Pretty Woman, with Julie Roberts and Richard Gere. You know, there's that scene where she and Richard Gere are talking and she's saying, you know, when people put you down enough, um, it's it's easy to believe. And he, he said something to that effect. And she said, you know, the bad stuff is just easier. And I think that's true when you're pushed down enough and you're in that lowest of low point and you're being told, oh, my God, you're a loser. You're, you know, you're never going to amount to anything. It really becomes part of your belief system and you don't even realize it. And um if you, you, you have two choices, and I really do believe it is a choice. You can choose to continue to be a victim and let that define you, or you can choose to fight back and prove it all wrong. And I think for, for me, I've had very low um, tolerance for people who sit in that victim mode and, the, you know, why me, why me, woe is me. And um, I chose to go the other way and to, and to be resilient and to prove it all wrong and, and to just have that determination to just constantly be better. 
And I know we talked too. I, I'm a believer in 12 step programs to a point, yep. but there's a lot of negativity in those programs. And there's a lot of negativity sometimes in certain groups. Yep. And that, when you're, when you're surrounding yourself with all that negativity, it envelops you. And so that's another thing that keeps people stuck yep. and in denial or in that victim mode because they surround themselves with all that negativity and that is not good. And that is what propelled me forward in doing the counseling. And I think what, I think what my breaking point was, by the way, in being a clinical, you know, therapist was there was that negativity in there. And I, you know, I've, I've had great benefit. I've been in therapy. I've had great benefit. I, you know, I, I love my therapist, but there has to, I kept thinking there has to be a way that it's not like, I don't want to be on the lifetime plan. I don't want to be in therapy for a hundred years. Not, right. not just because it's a time suck, but it's expensive. And, it, and then I found this life coaching thing and yeah. it's, it's short term. It's get you in, get you out. And it holds you accountable to do the work because in therapy, there's not a lot. People talk about accountability, but there's not a lot of accountability because right. You're not challenged enough to right. bring yourself to that next level. That I, amen. And and I, you know, I do I do some coaching too. And I'm I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I think that that one of the hardest parts of 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 helping somebody is is holding them accountable, right? Because it's a it's a fine line. But I'm always up front, like, look, man, I I don't pull punches. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, we're, we're, we're in this to help you win. And, and again, I'm, I'm not, um, I think that the, who, what was it? Was it, um, Freud that said the greatest therapist that we have is inside of each and every one of us or something. I'm, I'm screwed. Something like, but, it's something. you know, I, I think that for me, one, you know, I learned a long time ago that, that, that we're all connected and that there is this energy that exists down here beneath the xiphoid process that once you learn how to tap into that and go inside that that all of the answers are there if yeah. you if you if you look right so 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 what are like and and again i know you said you you didn't grow up privileged but you um you you were you you grew up in a they were doing okay household. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure that you've ever faced things like, you know, repossession of a vehicle like I, I have. Um, I actually had a car, uh, a vehicle repossessed in front of my employees one time. That was really an awesome day. Um, so, you know, but but I've had situations because I, I was brought up, I, I wasn't shown, there was no... You know, it's hard enough that you're not born with a user manual, <laughs> right? Like, Absolutely. Like that, yeah. that, and then you have people that never figured it out really raising, like you don't, you don't, <laughs> you know, like it's like, I, so I grew up without any kind of a roadmap and, and as a result, I've had to educate myself and learn along the way. But, um, you know, if somebody called you and they said, Julie, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn. My electric's being shut off tomorrow. My car was repossessed last week. I'm terrified and I, I can't figure it out. Everything I'm doing isn't working. What would you say to them um, in an empathetic way? <laughs> Let me underscore that. But what would you say to them to help them get, because you know and I know it's, it starts here, but what would you say to them to help them over that hump? So while I have not had anything me possessed, I will tell you that I moved out of the house. Um, I moved out of the house as my parents were getting divorced. I was still in undergrad and I worked. I worked three jobs while I um, did, went to school and I also continued to, I've never been afraid of work. I've, um, I've gone without many, many things in order to um, better myself. And I don't think it would be anything that I could necessarily say to that person to have them turn the corner because somebody has to want it. And I'm not, and, and in therapy, when I was a therapist, I found I oftentimes I was working a lot harder than my client 
I don't want to work harder than you. Right. Coach, you're going to work. I'm going to just sit back and ask some questions to help you figure it out. So yeah. rather than telling that person, I'm going to spin it a different way. I wouldn't necessarily tell that person anything, but I would say, you know what, if you really want, are, like how committed are you to um, improving your situation? And if they're, and if they're committed, then I hold their feet to the fire and I help guide them on that path by asking appreciative inquiry questions and taking their answers and forming a contract with them, forming a plan with them. And then it's up to them to, to do it or not. Right. Right. I love it. I love it. So what's, um, what's, what's, what's in the works for you right now? Anything big coming? I, I do have a couple of big things coming. Um, so I got my graduate certificate in executive coaching in April of 2018. Yeah. And I decided that while I still love, you know, working in the dental community and, 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 and working in the practice that I've helped build, I was missing something for me. I wanted, I, I felt like I want to go back and start helping people again. So I got certified in nutrition. I got, um, so I did a, a certificate in nutrition. I'm, so I'm a certified nutritionist. I'm a certified um, uh, personal trainer. Wow. I don't want to, but I, I have that certification so I can use that. And I want to do health and wellness for women. So because of you know the fact that I'm so passionate about health and wellness, having had an eating disorder, um, I really want to champion, not that I don't care about men. I do. But okay, I think right. There's a missing component for women. Women don't think they can have it all. They don't realize that they can work and be a mom and a wife and still have things for themselves and have time to better themselves and feel good. And I've been able to do all that. It's It's been a work in progress, and it took me a while to figure it out, but I did. And so um, launching my coaching practice this year, it's going to be called Unleash Your, Your Fearless because that was my tagline for school. And um, I have written a book. It's in the editing stages now. And I really, really, really hope I'm going to be um, speaking to some people. I'm hoping to have that um, released by the end of the first quarter, if not second quarter of this year. And I'm hoping that my story, because it talks a lot about some of the, you know, elaborates more about some of the things I alluded yeah. to this this um interview but yeah um, and then talks about um gives you some things to look towards and, and to help you forward and then you know if somebody feels a connection to me or or feels like maybe gosh i identify with that maybe she could help i you know i hope that that will help me as well and then i also um want to start doing some speaking engagements on on resilience so that's that is my my plan and my path for, for 2019, I hope. So. Love it. I love it. So you have a book coming out. What's the, do you have the book title yet? I do. It's called From Couch to Coach. Um, and see, my, that's where my speech comes in, Ken, from my, from my jaw surgery. Anything with a CH, it just. It oh, really? I, did, I can't tell. I can. But anyway, um, and the reason I picked that is, you know, having been, in therapy, having been a therapist, you know, the whole coach yeah. thing, and now, and now I'm into, and now I'm a coach. And so um, I thought it was kind of catchy, but that I is the it. book. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. So are you doing, are you self publishing or are you, do you have a publisher for it? Still working on that. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, I, I and I'll, I can help you with that probably some too. So um, you. if you, if you need help. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe this. I'm, I, I'm able to say this, but I have a, um, my book, I released my book on, I released it a year and a few months ago on Amazon and it became a bestseller, but it only hit number 92 on the bestseller list. Right. Which is great. It's a great book. I love it. Oh, thank you. You read my book. I did, and you still need to autograph it for me. Did I? So I'm gonna have to send it to you. Yeah. Well, no. Just send me, send me your. Um. We'll we'll get. I'll get your address. I'll send you a copy of it signed and. Oh, the, um. So so the um. You know, but but I I released it on Kindle a few weeks ago, 
and it went up the charts to the um, number one on hottest new releases and stayed wow. number one for 48 hours. I couldn't even believe it. Like I was blown I away. I was. I can believe. Away. But that's our world. Everything is. To, everyone wants the technology. No one wants to hold a book in their hand anymore, except for me. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I have. I mean, if you saw, like, I have stacks of books. I, I have, but I like, I like Kindle. I really do. I, I love reading on Kindle. So, so you know, um, my gosh. I, I mean, and I'm sure we could, we could talk and go, go super deep on a lot of things. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with everyone that that would be like encouraging? You know, again, I, I don't know that. You know, I mean, you're you're obviously at least you know the gauge is always in in life. The more money you have, the happier you're going to be, and that's just not the case. Um, you know that. I know that. Um, but you know, so it may not be relatable to some people saying, well, this, this, this chick's had it easy, like, right. But you, you haven't. And, no. and, and I would love to like, are there any words of encouragement that you would give to, you know, everyone listening? Like what the, because I think that the number one thing, this is where all of these fake coaches out here, um, that are just, you know, slimy salespeople really. Um, yeah. and there's a lot of them. That, oh, yeah. that that you know they're they're selling they're selling hope because they know I know you know that people want hope more than anything we want a reason to get up in the morning and and feel some sort of enthusiasm towards life and and so I think that people play on that but you know what in your opinion or, or your words of wisdom or advice what are some words that you could give to people to actually give them real hope and actionable steps they could take? Wow, that's a tough one, but I, I will say this. There, there's no easy button despite the commercials that say there's an easy button. And if you come across, and you and I know a lot of, a lot of the scammers that are out there, we've talked about that. Yes. Um, you know, if somebody comes to you and says, oh, I can fix all this and it's it's going to be easy and it's two easy steps or they're trying to charge you a ton of money or they say, come join me in Fiji or Bali or Italy and we'll do this workshop and all your problems are going to be solved. That's a bunch of bullshit. And that's <laughs> happen. Um, you, yes, hope is important, but you, you have to, um, you have to believe, look, Money doesn't buy happiness. Not everybody's going to be multimillionaires. And there, there is happiness can be defined in so many different ways. I would just say um, have goals, but make them attainable because you can't, like this whole New Year's resolution thing makes me crazy. Uh. Have, break it down. Pick one or two things that are really important to you or that you want to work on and put a plan together. Find yourself a coach or find something. And they don't have to be... $200 an hour coaches either because that doesn't make them any better than a $60 or $50 an hour coach. Right. Um, surround yourself with people that are like-minded find, you know, there are so many groups that are online now, meetup groups or other groups or Facebook groups and surround yourself with the positivity and with people that have something in common and you share a common interest in and, it's amazing what happens in life. That's when you start to propel yourself forward with that positivity. I actually just did this with, with my son who was kind of down and all of a sudden, you know, I don't know, about, I, I, I want to go back to New Jersey. I, I want to go play hockey in New Jersey. Why? Well, they're, they're more into hockey than they are here. And I realized what was happening is there are still players here that are serious, but he was not hanging out with the serious kids. He was hanging right. out with the kids that didn't care. Once he switched that and started hanging out with the kids that worked out every day and wanted to be at practice, guess what? His attitude changed and his his um, his play changed and yeah, that, and just doing a simple shift like that. So it doesn't have to be an expensive thing and it doesn't have to be a life all shattering thing and you don't have to read twenty books to get there either. So. Uh, you know, and I think honestly, I think that that's one of the the. And I, I don't think I know. I and only because I have experienced it personally. Okay, like 
I remember when I first got sober, I sat in a meeting of, of Alcoholics Anonymous and I, I, I saw this guy get a, get a, um, a, a coin for 60 days sober. And I was like, how did he do that? And then I remember a little bit later, I had 60 days and I saw somebody else get a 12 year coin. I was like, dude, what? You must be the most boring person on planet earth. Like who doesn't drink for 12 years? Holy crap. And now here I am at 16 and a half years sober. And I'm thinking, I see people with 40 years sober and I think, Oh my God, how'd you do that? You know? And, and so like, you know, I think that people don't, you know, we, we expect life to come at us all at once. Like, and, and it just does not happen that way at all. I have, I have a lot of friends who are dentists and, and I have one of my very dearest friends in the world has a very successful practice, but he, he didn't have at first, <laughs> like he was so no. freaking far in debt. He didn't know what, I mean, he literally, him and his wife, both are dentists and they had all this, I mean, you're talking 300 yeah. grand a, a person, like, like you had come out of like, so, but now he's, just, you know, he's starting to get some traction in his practice and, and it's been many, many years. And so. You know, I think that it's it's what you just said, like people that sit down and write out New Year's resolutions every year, like I, I on December 31st, it, nothing changed for me from it, like I just continued doing what I do and that's work my ass off. So like yeah. and if, if there's a sudden shift from December 31st to January 1st for you, like just plan on by the end of January, you're probably not going to be doing what you were doing January 1st. I'm just saying. So you got to learn to take it in small chunks. Nothing worth having in this life is handed to you. Right. And that, I mean, hard, hard work is what pays off. Nothing. There are no handouts in any, in any, in any part of, of life. And everything is hard work, whether it's working our business, you know, for me, whether it's working the dental practice or my coaching practice or being a mom, being a friend, it's all hard work. And that's what gets us there. And trust me, Ken, I've had many sleepless nights, even with the success of the practice. Steve and I have taken a lot of risks. I, I used know. to say, I'm, I'm, I'd say, oh, I'm not a gambler. Yeah. He's like, okay. No, I'm not like a slot machine gambler, but when I think about some of the things we've done, <laughs> right. it's gambling. It's gambling. I could, you know, I remember signing my first million dollar loan, thinking, <laughs> "Holy!" Like I used to read every contract. Now he'll hand something, and I just sign it. It's like okay, because <laughs> it, you know what? I, it. I know we're gonna work hard, and I know, I know that, and if it and if it fails, we're gonna figure something else out. And right pick ourselves up and go to the next thing it's it's not about the money it's about it's about wanting it and and going after it and working it that's so, it you're right you're, no, I'll you stop are so working right. and sleeping when i'm dead that's my motto my my uh, my good friend um and he's a mentor and coach of mine damien boudreau is on uh, he was mm -hmm. on here earlier i don't know if he still is but um you know, he called me the other day. He's like, what can I do for? And he's just an amazing, amazing human being. And, and I said, um, just tell me the, the secret to, um, to getting rich. And he says, uh, he says, that's easy. Don't focus on the money and it will come. True. Just focus on be like, you know, provide value and work your face off. Like, and that's the other thing is, is it takes, you wouldn't even believe how many entrepreneurs over the years have called me for marketing help or web development help or whatever. And, and they're terrified to put a few thousand bucks into their business. And it's like, dude, you're not going to make it. Like you need to shut down and go get a job somewhere. Like, cause like you like the risk, right? Yeah. The yeah. like you risk. You have to make. You have to invest in yourself. You have. You have to give a little to get something back. That's right. And 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 it's so it's you know it's crazy to me that 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 again, there's no way. That's the I I my my brother in law. I think of my brother in law who's incredibly successful and owns an airport and all this stuff. And and I I I watched him 
and my sister go through this 20 some 25 years ago having vehicles repossessed and and children and not you know like but just going all in anyway and just continuing to push 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 and so that's what it takes right absolutely there's no magic bullet no no easy button <laughs> there's not there's nope. really not there isn't no yeah you know, i'm much more rockefeller but you know what's that unless your last name is rockefeller but know? even then you know those guys risk they it worked all. hard that's true they worked hard to get there they yeah. they, they they sure do so you know like um Listen, I know you're a very, very busy lady. I also know it's pretty early out there. You're on, is it, are you in, in is that three hours behind me? Uh, it's almost 10 o'clock here, but I've already been working oh. since 5 a.m. So it's kind of lunchtime for me. Oh. I, this isn't early, Ken. This yeah. Is, yeah. Well, I'm a night owl, so that's <laughs> early to me. Um, yeah. But, and I always have been. I don't know why. I, I can't, I cannot get to sleep. Um, before like one or two in the morning. It's crazy. I just can't. I've tried and I just lay there like looking at the scene, like, okay, this is crazy. Um, because your but, brain's always working. Because what? Because your brain is on fire. It's always working. It, You're always spinning. It's always, yeah. Uh, those 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 things are, are definitely firing all the time. But um, yeah. so how, what's the best way um, for people to, and are you accepting new clients right now? I have not officially launched, but I absolutely would be um, open to anyone who wanted to reach out. I, you know, it's yeah. not official, but I would love to help people and, and get anyone who wants to get started on anything. Absolutely would love that. Okay. Um, so, so if, um, if, if, if people want to follow you, reach out to you, what's the best method on social media? Uh, the best method would be, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I also, you can email me at julie at slccaz.com. S-L-C-C-A-D.com. A-Z. Like A-Z. In Arizona. Oh, A-Z. Yeah. Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, um, there's some people popping on right now saying they'll have to catch the replay. Definitely catch the replay. This woman is amazing. I've known you now for what, a couple of years, I think. About and, three years. Huh? About three years. Has it been three? Jeez, yeah. that's crazy. I know. It flies. I know. So, yeah. you know, I, I haven't met you face to face yet, but I am looking forward to that day. I'd love to love to meet you face to face. I've met your husband face to face, but you were there, weren't you? I was there. I but was I didn't there. even. I was, I was actually paying attention to the conference, not out on my phone, you know, <laughs> not paying attention. So yeah. I. I, I it was a great conference. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Steve, I think Steve was just trying to, trying to improve life, you know, so he's such a good guy, but like, Hey, listen, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I know it's been, a, oh, thanks. been a, oh, I'm, I'm very grateful. So everybody that's on here right now, please make sure that you go follow Julie. Um, she can help you. I promise you she can help you if, if you're going through anything in life, um, this woman can, can help you get through it. So, um, reach out to her and, and connect with Julie. Julie, thank you so much for being on the show and, and, and maybe we'll have you on again when your, um, when your book is released, I'll help you promote it. That would be awesome. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. So, all right, listen, thank you guys. Thank you, Julie. Thanks to everybody that shared this. Appreciate all the shares. And uh, Julie, don't hang up on Skype. We'll, we'll finish up. But um, you guys have an awesome day. And thank you so much. Make sure you go follow Julie right now.